Hi everyone, welcome to another crochet tutorial with me, Laura. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do cables in Tunisian crochet. So this isn't gonna be a beginner's video for Tunisian crochet. So if you've never done Tunisian crochet before, and you haven't done the knit stitch and the purl stitch in Tunisian crochet, then I will put links in the description below so you can go learn those stitches first because uh, this might be a little bit too advanced otherwise. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing a mixture of purl stitches and knit stitches. Makes this way around actually. Um, all done with Tunisian crochet. I'm gonna be using a straight crochet Tunisian crochet hooks so you can get two different types of Tunisian crochet hooks you can get these long straight ones like this which are like knitting needles but they have a hook at the end and but you can also get the other ones with the cables on the end I'm going to use the straight ones but you can use either and I'm going to use some really chunky yarn um, for the sake of this video just so it shows up better so I'm going to use some DMC Natura extra large just cotton so a bit of free promotion for them <laughs> so let's begin so I'm going to do a few chains I'm going to chain 20 to begin um, because what I'm going to do is like you need to when you're working your cables you need to work out what size you want your cable to be now my cable just like in knitting is made up of the knit stitch and either side I've got the purl stitches and this is so that it stands out more so you get a different texture a different stitch and you do the similar thing in knitting as well to make your cables stand out and so what I've got at the beginning is I've got two the first couple of stitches are purl then I've got two stitches in the knit stitch and then I've got two stitches in the purl stitch and I've got the same this side as well two purl two knit two purl and each side of my cable twist is made up of four stitches in the knit stitch so is it that way around or is it this way around can't work it out. Um, so all in all, two, 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 four, four, two, two, two adds up to 20. So it's a good idea before you work your cable stitch um, to work out basically how many stitches you're going to need um, either side and for your cable itself. So I'm going to chain 20 and we're going to do the same pattern as I've done here. I'm going to do it with a much chunky yarn. I'm going to do it with a massive Tunisian crochet hook. So it's going to look quite loose, but it's so you can see it a bit better. Is So this is a really large one. This is an 8mm and this is like a chunky, super chunky yarn. But you can use any yarn that you like and any hook size that's suitable for the yarn you're using. This is not suitable for the yarn I'm using, but it's so you can see it better on camera. So I'm going to start off by slip knot and I'm going to chain 20. So... Chain one, two, three, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, so I've chained twenty, and that's how many stitches we will have twenty. So we don't do any extra ones on the chain row. Okay, so we're going to work into our second chain from hook. Don't count the loop on your hook. There's a first, there's a second chain. Hook into there, and we're just going to bring the yarn through. We're going to keep it on our hook like we do with Tunisian crochet. And we'll do that all the way along. Go into the next chain, keep the loop on your hook. So I'm going to do that for each chain across. So we've got 20 loops on our hook, cross stitches, then 18 so I've skipped ahead because this is just standard Tunisian crochet like I said if you're new to Tunisian crochet go check out my beginner tutorials so this makes more sense to you but I've worked into each chain across just yarning over bringing the yarn through and keeping it on my hook so I've got 20 loops on my hook now I'm going to do a standard reverse row in Tunisian crochet so whenever we do a reverse row we always do a chain one at the beginning so that's just bringing it through yarn over and bringing it through the first loop only okay so we always do that just that one loop and then we yarn over and pull through two loops until we get to the end so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two all the way back to the beginning two 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 it's like doing a really, 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 really big 
double treble <laughs> stitch just pulling through two that's effectively alternating crochet is really it's just very very big stitch going downwards like that okay so yarn over pull through two till you get back to the beginning it's just a standard reverse row so we've done our first two normal Tunisian crochet rows that you have to do for every project because now we're back at the beginning we get our vertical bars that we can work our stitches into so last two Yarn over, pull through two, and we've got one loop left which we keep. Okay, so now as you can see, we've got these vertical bars going down here. Now, the very first one is here, but we don't work into that one because the loop above counts as our first stitch. So we're going to find our next vertical bar. First two stitches are going to count as purl, but the first one's kind of already done because it's already the loop. So I'm just going to do a purl stitch around this loop so if you remember with the purl stitch and if you haven't done purl stitch before or knit stitch then do go check out my videos that show you how to do those in more detail we bring the yarn forward and we're going to just go to this side of our vertical bar making sure the yarn we're working with is in the front and underneath put our hook underneath that vertical bar keeping the hook this side then bring up your yarn yarn over and just pulling that down bring the yarn through and that captures the yarn on the outside creating a little purl stitch okay there. now I'm going to do two knit stitches so the yarn needs to go at the top and to do a knit stitch we go under the next vertical bar and then we're going to go to the back so we go under the vertical bar is that all the vertical bar? it's all the vertical bar and then we're going to go to the back so if you just see beyond there should be a little hole there we're going to put a hook to the back I'm going to grab the yarn from the back bring it through that hole and then we're going to bring it underneath the vertical bar and bring that up and that does a knit stitch it doesn't look like much at the moment but it does work a knit stitch eventually I'm going to do another one of those so keeping the yarn at the top we go under the vertical bar and go to that gap, that square gap at the back. Grab the yarn, bring it through the gap and under the vertical bar. Now we've got two knit stitches. Now I'm going to do two purl stitches. So I'm going to bring the yarn down to the front, making sure it's tucked up nicely against this stitch here. So we can clearly see the next vertical bar, which is there. Careful not to work under this one here you've already worked under. Find this nice clear one put your hook under but it's not going to the back this time it stays at the front wrap the yarn round yarn over and bring that through it does a purl stitch and do another one of those okay give it a little pull afterwards just to neaten it off okay so we've got two purl two knit two purl now i'm going to divide my cable into groups of four four knit stitches this side and four knit stitches this side so to start off with I'm doing eight knit stitches so we don't need to worry about the purl at uh, the cable at the moment we're just doing a few rows of standard knit stitches eight knit stitches so I'm going to work eight knit stitches so making sure the yarns at the top go on to the next vertical bar go to the back bring the yarn through and up I want eight of those, that's one, two, three. We're going to the back for our knit stitches, four, five, six, seven and eight okay so i've done eight knit stitches and you'll know they're knit stitches because this will start bumping up on you now we're going to do two purl the other side of our cable so our cable's just 
it's in the, the early processes at the moment still, so you're not going to see any cabling just yet. So to do a purl, we bring the yarn to the front. It's very important to bring it to the front. Tuck it up nicely against this stitch, then go on to the next vertical bar. But we're keeping the hook at the front, wrapping it round, grab the yarn, bring that through. And then give it a little pull afterwards. So you want two of those. And then we're going to do two knit stitches, so the yarn goes to the top. Let me go under. And this time we're going to go to the back and grab the yarn from the back. Coming to the right hand side of the vertical bar. Got two of those. Okay, you should have two stitches left. Here we are, one, two on the end. We do two purl stitches. So again, bring the yarn to the front. Go onto the vertical bar, wrapping the yarn round. Grab it and bring that through. Give it a little pull. And the last one always helps because sometimes you can think this is the last vertical bar, so you need to make sure your work's level with your hook so you can see clearly where the last vertical bar is. That's why, if you're new to Tunisian crochet, it's a good idea to use a chunky yarn like this so you can see what you're doing. Then wrapping the yarn round, grab the yarn, and bring that through. And it helps to just pull that down a bit as it comes through. That might be easier to see with chunky crochet, but I'm sure it's slightly more fiddlier. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got the first two. The very first one we're counting as a purl, even though it doesn't look like a purl. So then we do one purl, two knit, two purl, then eight knit, two purl, two knit, two purl. And that's going to create this pattern. So it's going to be a light ribbing effect here. So you see this knit stitch standing out here. Please focus. And then to offset our cable, we got the pearl either side and then these four in knit, four in knit. So these eight knit stitches. I'm going to be dividing those up into two twists. Okay, then we do a reverse row. And the reverse rows are always the same no matter what stitch you've done. We always bring yarn over and bring it for the first loop only, just one loop at the beginning. So always, always make sure you remember that. Then we yarn over, pull through two until we get to the end. So pull through two. <laughs> I need to bunch these down a bit, stretching. Pull through two. Pull through two till we get back to the beginning. So there we go. And I've just realised I've actually started doing my pattern before. Because on here I did two rows of complete just purl stitches. So if you want to follow this exactly, then before I started dividing it up, I just did two rows of purl. Um, but you don't have to do that. I've gone straight into this pattern here, just for the sake of this video. And I'm just going to do that three more times. So I'm going to follow that pattern three more times. And then I shall come back and show you then how to work your cable. So again, you see we've got vertical bars here again. We're going to do the same thing again. Now I've noticed when you've got a knit, a knit stitch here and a purl stitch, it's quite easy to miss, especially with using a thinner yarn, it's quite easy to miss this first purl stitch. So do check your stitch count when you get to this end before your reverse row. Check you've got 20 and if you haven't, then most likely you've missed this second one here. So we skip the first vertical bar and we're going to go under, bring the yarn forward, do a purl again. Then go onto this little vertical bar and you can see where this little horizontal bar is. Your vertical bar is just above that. I'm going to do another purl stitch to match the pattern. Then yarn to the back and we're going to do two knit stitches. So now we're going under this vertical bar through the gap. Grab the yarn from the back, bring it through the hole and under the vertical bar to the right. Two of those. And then bring the yarn forward. I'm going to do two purl stitches, which are going to look smaller than the knit stitches because they've got the uh, horizontal bar in the way. Okay, two purl stitches. That's our little pattern there. You start seeing the knit stitch effect. And then I'm going to do eight knit stitches. Okay, so I'm going to follow this pattern twice more. Um, I'm going to do it for, I think I did it for about, how many rows? I did, so one set would be forward and backwards and do that four times. So I'm going to do this 
three more times. I'm going to go this way, then reverse, this way, reverse, this way, and reverse. And then I shall come back. So eight knit stitches now. Make sure the yarn's at the top so you can grab it from the back. Okay, so one, two. Okay, so I think I've done four sets, eight rows in total. I um, actually lost count, but the idea is, is that you just do a few rows, just work in the pattern so you get a little bit of length so we can really show off our cable. So as you can really see here now, we've got the two purl at the beginning, or the standard loop, and then a purl, two knit, two purl, and then we've got these eight knit stitches in the middle, and then we finish off with the same two purl, two knit, two purl to match this side. So we've got these eight knit stitches in the middle. We're going to divide them in half. So we've got four either side and we're going to twist them to do the cable. So to do that, it's a little bit fiddly. I tried to use the concept like we do in knitting, but first of all, we need to get up to our knit stitches. So let's just do our purl stitch. Then our two knit stitches. And then our two purl stitches, making sure to alternate the yarn. Now, knit stitches and purl stitches in Tunisian crochet are not the same structure as real knitting. They just give the effect, because if you turn it over, all you get is this bobbly effect here. So it is different. But now we're up to our knit stitches. So we put our yarn to the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to skip the first four knit stitches and we're going to work the next four instead. So we're going to skip these four vertical bars and we're going to go under the next one. And your yarn's going to be all the way over here, but you just need to make sure it's at the back and work your knit stitches as normal. Trying not to pull that piece of yarn too much to so keep it nice and flat. And work the next four knit stitches. Two. Three. And four. Okay, so you've worked the next four knit stitches, but now you need to go back and work these four. But of course, they're all stuck on a very rigid knitting uh, crochet Tunisian hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to work these next four on a different hook. So grab another hook. It doesn't matter what size it is. We just need to work these next four. So go back to the first one that you skipped here go to the back. You're going to grab the yarn, but it's going to be all the way over here. So you just need to grab the right bit of yarn, bring that through and just keeping it flat. Try not to pull, put it too much and then go on to the next one to go to the back, do a normal knit stitch, keep it on your hook. Then the next one is there. Grab the yarn. And the next one is there. And just bring that through. So you've got these four worked on this hook. And what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a knitting needle. Um, you can keep them on the hook as well, but what I find easier is if you find, get a little knitting needle, actually put it in this way. We're going to loop them onto our knitting needle. Keep our little loops. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's not very often you have to do these twists. So, And then what we need to do is we need to push these over and twist them. So we're going to drag these over so they're at the front. And we're going to loop these onto our crochet hook that we're working with. Two, three, and four. Okay, so now... What we did, we skipped four, we worked four, and these are those ones there, and these four are the ones we skipped. So effectively what we're doing is we're now twisting our work, which you can't see very much at the moment, but if we keep going, it should come together. So the next two are the purl stitches, so we bring the yarn to the front, and we finish and follow the pattern to the end as normal. So let's just do two little purl stitches. two purl, then back to two knit, the yarn at the top, one and two, 
crochet it down and then yarn forward to do the last two purl stitches. Okay, so if you struggled a little bit, it might be easier to do a smaller cable rather than the 4x4. Four four. You might want to do a 2x2. Two two. So you do four knit stitches cut in half to two stitches either side. So there we go. So it looks a little bit mungled mess at the moment. Is that a word? Mungled? I don't know. <laughs> but now we're just going to do a normal reverse row like we always do. So we do our little chain one first. Let's bump these up a bit. We'll chain one first, come through the first loop only. And then some more yarn. We yarn over and pull through two until we get to the end. back to the beginning so there we are so it looks a bit crazy at the moment but now what we're going to do is we're going to work the pattern as normal I'm going to do it for six sets that's 12 rows including the reverse rows until we get a little bit of length just to so we can start to see so I'm going to do that I'm just going to work this follow the pattern and do it for six sets so 12 rows in total and then we should once you've done that we should start to see the cable twist appear. So, do my two pearls. Now we need to find our eight knit stitches. Now the first ones are going to be tucked under here, so you want to just pull them out a little bit so you can see them clearly. So there's our first knit stitch and then just count them so one two three there's the fourth one just tucked at the end four and then the next four are going to be on this bit over here so you need to make sure you can see those so one two three four they're going to be almost horizontal but just make sure to move that fabric out of the way to go to the back. One, two, there's the next one to the back. Three, and the very last one, very, very long one to the gap. Four. And then we're back to our pearl stitches. just finish the pattern as normal to the end. Then do a reverse row and then just repeat that for a few more rows so then we can start to see the pattern, the cable appear. now it starts to loosen up the more rows you do the more it starts to loosen up and what you have created if you do a few more rows then of just normal pattern you should start to see that open out and your twist will flatten down so I'm going to do that I'm going to repeat the normal pattern over and over for I'm going to do five more sets and then uh, I'll come back and show you so reverse rows are always the same just chain one and then yarn over pull through two until you get to the end Okay, so it's starting to get a little bit dark now, but uh, hopefully you can still see. So what I've done is I've just done worked the pattern for a few more rows and then until it starts to lay flat and you can't see the divide as much. So there we are, it really shows off the first twist. And then you're ready for your next twist. So we just follow the pattern up to our knit stitches. So let's just work our pattern again. It's a lot, it's a lot easier doing this off camera, I've noticed. So 
a little purl stitch which mustn't miss. Right, so purl stitch, then the two knit stitches. Of course you don't need to follow this exact pattern, you could just do two knit stitches at the beginning and then purl stitches and then your cable. It's entirely up to you, it's an experiment. Just make sure you work out your stitch count before you start so, so that it divides up nice and equally. You don't have a lopsided cable. Okay, so we're up to our pattern again, up to our cable rather. So again, we just do the same thing again. We skip the first four of our knit stitches and we go into the fifth one. And making sure not to pull the yarn too much, we're gonna to go to the back and grab the yarn, bring that through. Okay, keeping that fabric there, because it's coming from there, keep that flat so it doesn't twist up too much. And do the next four knit stitches as normal. Two, three, and four. Okay, and this is where we need to get in our second crochet hook. And we're going to find the first one that we skipped and go under there go to the back and then grab the arm from over here again being careful not to pull it so once you've gone through just pull that so it doesn't distort your work otherwise it will start to pull on it too much then under the next one if you're struggling to st see your stitches just remember where the last one was and you can clearly see where the next one is go to the back then the last one we missed is there. Bring that through. We've got our four loops. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go on knitting needle or another crochet hook so you can go in the opposite direction and we're just going to feed that onto our knitting needle. You could even use a proper cable hook as well, couldn't you, like in real knitting? Okay, pop those onto there, so now they're facing this direction, and bunch those up, and then we're going to create our twist. Now, if you wanted the twist to be the other way, you would have to work these stitches this side and then twist it when you pull those up. You'll be putting them on from the back rather than the front. But what we're going to do, we're just going to pop those on now, bunch those stitches up, pop these on. One, two, Three and four is quite loose because it's the last one we worked, so we're just going to pull on our yarn. And there we are, so they're all sat on there, nicely twisted, and then we just follow the pattern to the end. So bring the yarn to the front to do our next two little pearl stitches. And there we go, that's our next twist, and we just carry on repeating that, so just finishes to the end. So I hope that's inspired you. If you've enjoyed doing some Tunisian crochet, but you want to mix it up a little bit, you fancy experimenting, then uh, hopefully this you'll give this a go. So it's not as fiddly. It's more fiddly in the in the sort of structure, trying to make sure that it lays flat and doesn't get too tight in the middle. And the key thing to that is not pulling on your fabric, on your yarn rather, too much, so it doesn't distort your fabric. There we are, follow the pattern to the end, and then we do a reverse row as normal, dividing up these stitches so you can see where you need to work. Let's do a little chain one, and then yarn over, pull through two to the end. I think that's all about I've got time for, for this video. It's getting dark already, it's crazy. But I've got some really nice Tunisian hooks coming to the marketplace this week um, by Knit Pro, which are very similar to these ones. And if you, many of you ask me, how do you make items bigger? Because obviously you're restricted by how long these straight Tunisian hooks are. You can buy also on my, in the marketplace, Happy Marketplace, you can buy 
Tunisian hooks that have extendable cables that screw into the end. They're also by Knit Pro. And uh, different size cables, so we should be selling the cables as well, and that you just screw in. So then once you screw those in, it just allows you, it's like just extending the hook really. So it enables you to work as many loops as you like. So that's quite good. I think overall I still prefer these straight hooks um, just for little smaller projects. That's just me. <laughs> I'll show you some of the products that I've got in a minute. Um, the set anyway. So there we are, we're back at the beginning. So then we just need to work a normal, few normal, few more normal rows. <laughs> so again, I'll just show you this row because this is the most fiddliest to see where your stitches are. So we follow the pattern up to our cable. Let's do a little pearl stitch and two knit stitches. So whenever you're working out how many stitches you need, you just need to remember that the loop that's always on your hook counts as your first stitch. Otherwise you'll end up with three stitches at the beginning if you think you're going to do two purl. So we're up to our cable, which is all looking twisty. We know we're doing knit stitches, so we put that to the back. And then sat at the back, so we just want to just pull them out so we can see the four vertical bars and then we just go under to the back as normal one two three and that last one four and then our next four are at the front and they're slanty so they're slanted to the side so we just need to one two three four if you can see them we go under and then go to the back but when you do go to the back just make sure you're not going for any other fabric so one next one line it up with the last one you worked into two three and this last one which is usually the longest one four and there we go, and then you just work the pattern as normal to the end. So if I zoom out, my camera refocus, thank you, you can see the cables really coming together. And that loop there is just because you need to pull your yarn a bit more, so you're sure you can do a neater job than me. But hopefully that's really inspired you, and if you haven't pulled on your yarn too much, then this should lie relatively flat. Obviously it's going to be bulky, because you've twisted your yarn. But there we go, so that's how you create... Tunisian cables in Tunisian crochet and I'll show you briefly um, so I'll just show you quickly an alternative to these long straight ones you can buy I've got some here I sell these in the marketplace this is actually a set knit pro set so you've got the a shorter Tunisian hook you've got this metal screw at the end a little hole at the end and into that you screw in the cable so you can see those and if you can see those cables underneath the little ends there the silver ends they screw into that and it adds it just makes it longer and you can buy them in different lengths so you could you can do a blanket baby blanket you think the ones we're going to get in are up to including the size of the hook 100 centimeters and um, also getting a really big one i think it's 200 centimeters so hopefully you can make some pretty big projects so you can get these on our website these ones are by knit pro so there we go interchangeable afghan tunisian crochet hook set so there you go it shows you there it screws into the end like so and you can also put stoppers in as well so it acts as the same as one as that one of those if you want to use it as a shorter Tunisian hook. But anyway, that's all from me. I will see you soon for some more crochet fun. I hope you'll have fun working some uh, Tunisian cables. But uh, yeah, cheers for watching. Bye. Don't forget to join me on Instagram. Hmm.